The Final Fantasy franchise and its main games are known for sharing many features between them that could make anyone go, oh, this is a Final Fantasy game. These things can be the job systems that characters can have for gameplay reasons, or abilities like the name of the magic spells with Flare, Ultima and the Ara or Aga ones. One concept that may sound weird to outsiders is the existence of characters named Sid, to the point that the name has become a Final Fantasy trademark, on the same level as iconic mascots like Chocobos and Mongols, funny enough. With Final Fantasy XVI coming up in less than 8 weeks, as we get to learn more about the game, we also learn that the main character Clive is not going to be alone. Despite the focus on him during fights, he will still be followed by your party members and friends, including Torgal, who we talked before about him. This will be the third part of my set of videos in which we do a summary of the previous releases in the series to check how they handled what Final Fantasy XVI is also doing in its unique way. In this case, what role did the seed of each game have? as it varies pretty often from game to game, but they also tend to share some things, which can serve as a hint to understand this new one. We are going to visit each game chronologically, and while each has its own character with a particular role or story on it, we can check what similar aspects they share between them, and also it's important to highlight that in a less predominant way there's going to be characters called mid, who are often related to the seed of that game, so we can pay attention to find those too. Mid. When did you get back? Before starting, be mindful of spoilers in each section, and any type of support in the form of subs or likes, etc., I will deeply appreciate. The very first seed in Final Fantasy came in the second game. Although it's important to mention that they added a seed in the Final Fantasy 1 world, but this came in the future releases, and in my head that's cheating. So let's start with the OG. Here we are able to see the main features that every seed will or could have. In this game he is the owner and captain of the airship to be able to sail the skies. He started as the captain of the White Knights of the Kingdom of Finn, but left to start his engineer job and focus on this air transport business. Physically, he is a middle-aged, experienced man with blonde hair and a defined mustache. In the story, he acts as an important NPC, as you need to resort to him when in need to get an airship to be able to fight or deal with the Empire's Dreadnought. During an airship travel, both Sid and Princess Hilda are captured by the Empire, and the rebel's objective is to infiltrate and rescue both, while destroying the warship. Because of a following cyclone of the Emperor, Sid is fatally injured and rests at Paul's home in Finn. It is too late though, as after entrusting Firion his own airship, he dies there because of the injuries. But you can see him again, during the side dungeon at the remake for the GVA, Sid joins other guest party members who died in the base game on their own quest in the afterlife, in a city called Makanon. In Final Fantasy III we have a character called Sid Hayes, he is known as an inventor who worked for the King of Argus and will seek help to the Warriors of Light to lift a curse on him that made him incorporeal, by offering the airship of his own creation. We are starting to see a pattern here already, aren't we? Physically though, this time he's an eccentric man, significantly older with a large white beard and a white pointy hat, always carrying a hammer as his main tool, both for his inventor works, but also he can use it as a weapon in battle. In the original game, he is the NPC who eventually helps the party with his airship upgrades and more equipment to match his profession, and one of those who join the main party in the story at the moment to recruit important characters to help break a curse that turned us into stone. But we can highlight how in the 3D remake for the DS originally, Sid become one of the guest party members, being able to either join with a one hit with his hammer or casting a fire attack. So he's an NPC, but with a little bit of gameplay in a later edition. We 
moving very smoothly to Final Fantasy IV and Sid Paul and Dina. That is because the gameplay and use of Hammer come to fruition here in this game, as this is the first playable Sid in the series, but also the head of the Engineers Corp in the Kingdom of Baron, developing and designing the elite airship of such, usually led by Cecil and his Red Wings army. Another important aspect of this Sid in particular is that he has a very fatherly or mentor role for the main character Cecil and also Rosa, who end up being a couple and the future king and queen of Baron. That is why during the story, the actions of the manipulated king of Baron were enough for him and decided to hide his brand new Enterprise airship, being imprisoned for treason until the party led by Cecil freed him and decides to follow them in their own quest. As we mentioned, he is not an NPC in this game but a party member, and Sid has a very important moment during the story, as he not only upgrades and leads any airship mission to search for goldbells and the crystals he's trying to conquer, but also, during their mission at the Underworld, when the party is in danger to fall into lava, Sid returns to them to save them with his upgraded ship able to cross the lava, then he orders Cecil to take the wheel to exit the underground as he decides to close the entrance with a bomb, jumping off the airship to do so, saving the others and is assumed dead for a while. Of course, in the most Final Fantasy IV fashion, he is later found alive and resting at the Dwarf's infirmary, taking care of him to get better and survive. So he still has the health and energy to make more improvements needed to the airship, and build a new fleet to lead the attack to the Giant of Babel encounter, which ends with Cecil and the rest invading the Giant and destroying him. During the end, Sid remains at the Tower of Wishes in Mysidia, praying for the party and their final victory, along with the rest of the party. Last time you see him in this game, he acts as a best man at Cecil and Rosa's wedding. Final Fantasy V introduces something also pretty interesting. First of all, we have our Sid Previa, who is, of course, the engineer from Karnak, who besides being an inventor of the machine that amplifies power of the crystals, he's also a scholar or researcher at the Library of the Ancients, and yes, will also be the one in charge of building and upgrading any type of airship you get through the game. The interesting thing here is that he won't be alone for that role, as his grandson is going to be next to him all the time including helping him to regain motivation after the crystals were destroyed, not being able to handle the amplified power. And his name is Mid Previa. Starting a new but lesser known tradition of Final Fantasy character names, as the name Mid will appear in different games, always as a side character related to the Seed of that world. Both Sid and Mid are NPCs who, after the quest involving the destroyed crystals and the resolution of grandson and granddad to make amends for that, are going to be reliable guides and source of information for the main crew, especially after discovering the ancient airship that they managed to reactive and upgrade so they can use it both on air and on water eventually. Or how they managed to come up with a plan to send Bards, Lena and Faris to Galuf's world through the meteorites. Last time you see Sid, he asked the crew to save the world with a feeling of regret, as while he did all he could do to help the party providing the upgraded machinery, he still laments his past actions and tries to amend them. I feel like this is a smooth transition too because while the previous Sid was not only an airship engineer but also a scholar or researcher, Final Fantasy VI, Sid del Norte Marquez, is the main scientist of the Castilian Empire, leaving that airship connection a little bit aside for this case. By the way, as a Spanish speaker I'm guessing that G could be a Q instead, but whatever. It's important to highlight that this time, Sid doesn't start by helping the party, but rather, he works for the Empire and is the creator of Magitek that allows humans and machines to be infused with magic, therefore allowing the Empire to become the superpower world conqueror that it is. And more importantly, he is the one who experimented on Kefka that ended up on his power and also his fragile mind that drove him insane. That same process was later refined and tested on Celes, one of the main characters who, opposite to Kefka, 
raised and treated her as her own daughter. During the story, this fatherly relationship with Celes is the main reason that when the party invades the capital, Sid bemoaned his hand in the Empire's action and what he did to Celes, and resolved to speak to Emperor Gestalt about ending the war, helping the player to escape from Kefka at that point, with some drama around, of course. After Kefka claimed the power of the Warring Triad and caused the world of ruin, Sid woke up on a solitary island in the ocean with the comatose Celes, dedicating the following year to take care of her until she woke up and recovered her consciousness. When she did, she starts taking care of him and for the first time she acknowledged him as a granddad. Sid's fate depends on the player's actions. If Celeste takes care of him at the start of the World of Ruin, he will survive and tell Celeste about his raft, allowing her to continue her path and meet the rest of the characters. If she doesn't, he will pass away, and Celeste will attempt to jump off a cliff. Surviving and finding hope again through Log's bandana, before finding a last letter from Sid along said rafts and moving on. Final Fantasy VII has one of the most popular and recognizable Sid in the series. This is not only because of the nature of the game, but it also can be explained because besides having a role of an inventor or engineer who owns an airship, he also is a playable character in this game, has an active role leading the party at some point, has a strong eccentric presence and personality, and shares some other trademarks, like having the last name Highwind and being the unconventional dragoon of the series with his weapons and limit breaks, one of the most popular jobs in the series. Sid is an ex-employee of Shinra, pilot and inventor of the airship The Highwind, who unofficially left the company after a failed attempt to go to space along the rocket number 26. This cancelled mission and the discovery of Mako made Sid's project have less priority and the space program was abandoned. A town called Rocket Town was built around and this is where Sid lives along with his assistant Shera. During the game the party meets him there and when Shinra executives followed by Rufus attempt to steal his personal airplane, the tiny Bronco, he joins Clouds and allies. His most important roles in the story involves being a key factor in stealing the high wind back from Shinra as the crew followed him instead of Heidegger, being chosen as the leader of the party after both Cloud and Tifa aren't available as she stays behind to take care of him, making see the character controlled by the player for a couple of missions. And finally, he would be part of the mission to finally go to space in the rocket sent to destroy the summoned meteor and having an inner turmoil about the idea of using the huge materia in the rocket to destroy it and save the world through the progress of human science and inventions, or to take it back as this is a big part of the knowledge of the ancients, and was taken out from the livestream by the reactors in large quantity, which slowly but surely kills the planet. Probably what sticks up the most of him is his personality, as he is constantly swearing and reacting strongly, even if he is well intended especially after realizing that his failed dream of going to space back then was the right choice as the safety conditions weren't the appropriate ones. But because of these things and how unhinged he is, his appearance is one of my personal most anticipated things for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth next winter. In Final Fantasy VIII, we go back to a side character instead. Here we have Sid Kramer, the Balam Garden headmaster, the place where Squall and the others are students, and whose objective is to train Sid members to be able to eventually defeat the powerful sorceress. The reason for the garden's creation is because Sid is married to Edea, a caring woman who raised children in an orphanage. On a fateful day, a dying sorceress Ultimesia appeared in front of her to pass on her powers, and with her there was the teenage Squall Leonhardt, who explained that he was part of Sid, an organization founded by her to hunt the sorceress. This is why she and Sid decided to follow his words, 
with the latter having the task of creating Balam Garden. This drifted Sid and Edea away, as she was destined to become the sorceress they were preparing to defeat. Of course, in the middle there's conflict about the run of Balam Garden as organizations such as Nork uses Sid members as mercenary as a way to fund the needs of such establishment, but the main objective that Sid carries is to pay attention to the training to an eventual clash against Udimesha or any manifestation of her. When you think this seed doesn't have any link to inventions or airships, it is revealed that the Balam Garden itself is capable of flying, making him the leader of an airship in the most technical way. In any case, after that he would instruct Squall to lead everyone in this fight, which is something I'm sure he's very pleased about. At the end of everything, during some of the nicest ending credits in the series, you are able to see Sid talking friendly with part of our crew and being able to introduce Edea once again, without any manifestations of the sorcerers present. In Final Fantasy IX, Sid will be an important figure in the world of Gaia, as he is the ruler of the city of Lindblom, one of the three biggest cities in the Mist continent, home of Sidan, or at least raised here. His full name is Sid Fabul. Fabul, by the way, while not written the same, is a callback to a city in Final Fantasy IV, more of that in this lovely video. Not only is he the regent of the city, but in the most Sid tradition, he is by far the most knowledgeable person about the creation of airships and the source of energy in this world that make them work. The fun part is that, personality-wise, the regent here may be a little bit tempted by other women, getting caught by his wife Hilda which caused a curse on him, turning him into an insect called Oglop, and abandoned him along the main airship Hilda Guard 1. Later, in our attempt to bring him back, we turn him into a frog instead, always keeping his fancy moustache though. But he still keeps the fatherly protective nature to Princess Carnet, so that's good. In the story, Sid takes a key role as regent of Lindblom to help us against the attack and sudden change of Queen Bran, but also later against Kucha, as our way of transportation is very important. With that being said, the fact that he is not in his human form makes the plans and constructions of better and improved airships to slow down, getting behind in this area. Luckily for him, we eventually find Hilda at Mount Gulu in our attempt to save Aiko, and they make amends that ends up in Sid becoming a human again, and behaving like a good boy with his wife again. That allows the constructions of the Hilda Guard 3 to go smoothly, and the main party is able to use it in the search to reach Kucha. Before the final dungeon, while reaching Memoria in the ship The Invincible, we are supported by both Alexandria's and Limblum airship fleets, the latter led by Sid. We see Sid during the epilogue, as he and Hilda end up adopting Aiko as their child, as they go to see the new performance of the theater trope Tantalus at Alexandria. Final Fantasy X is a game known particularly for not giving the last name to the main characters, so this is the case with Sid here, as he is referred to just like that. Sid acts as the leader of the al Bev, a tribe of technologists who are known for their use of machina, which is the reason they are labeled as heretics and widely ostracized, as the religion of Evon preached that the existence of sin is a punishment for the use of these things. Sid not only is the leader, but he is important to the story as he is the father of the party member Riku, an uncle of the iconic Yuna herself, as her mother was part of the al -Veth. During the story, Sid tried to kidnap the summoners, so they stopped their pilgrimages, as this would end up in their own death, just like it happened with Braska. And when the party reached their capital, and the Guado invades them, he decides to blow off his home and escape in an airship, one he unearths with the help of the others in an excavation near Bash Temple.
Sid repaired and now leads this ship called the Fahrenheit, which will be our means of transportation, not only in the following quest, but to visit any previous location in the game, and even being part of some boss fights, like fighting Efrae in the air, which you can give Sid the command to move closer or farther to the enemy. During the end, he supports the group as they attack Sid head on and destroy it from the inside during the final dungeon, and you can see that most of the ending happens on top of the airship. He became a little bit unhinged in Final Fantasy X II, as he turns Sanakan into a tourist attraction to fund Holmes' restoration, and after some scolding from Riku, he turns that down and starts having some adventure of his own. Final Fantasy XI is not my strongest point, so I'm sorry about that, but there's no better place to add callbacks and be referential than in an MMO, so of course you would expect an inventor seed with an active role in the game. In this case, he's the most prominent engineer and inventor in the world of Panadiel. You can find him at his workshop, and besides giving you a couple of quests for his inventions, as expected, he will take a more predominant role in the story during the Chains of Promathia expansion, as he starts to develop his own airship and helps the adventurer during it working with Prish and the others to try to intervene with Bahamut's assault. Something cute about it is that in a later expansion it is revealed that Sid has an adopted son named Mithras, keeping the smaller tradition of having a character related to Sid named Myth, or at least a variation of it. So they even add that detail. Final Fantasy XII comes up with a plot twist, as this is the first time Sid appears as an important antagonist and boss fight in the story of the game, this time by Dr. Sidolfus Demen Bonanza, or just, you know, Dr. Sid. Being antagonist though doesn't mean he's not heavily linked to inventions, as he is Arcadia's chief researcher who leads the study of Nethysite, but also the creator of most airship fleets, including the Sky Fortress Bahamut and every other ship with a summon name. His role as antagonist goes deeper than that, as during the story he is a close ally of Vane, and while it may seem weird as he is presented talking out loud alone, as we discover more, we learn about the Okuria, that can be shown only to those who they wish to be seen by. In particular, Venat objects to the Okuria under control over mankind to manipulate them, allying with Dr. Sid with the motivation to free mankind from their own race. That explains the many scenes of him talking to apparently no one, but it was always next to Bennett. Of course, the circumstances and methods can be seen both as benevolent or as the same thing the Okuria have always done, bestowing a particular power to the mortals to shape the history of Ivalis accordingly. His other big link to the main character party is that we learn that the leading man, Balthir himself, is the son of Sid, but after seeing his father lose insanity, talking to someone who wasn't there, the relationship started to crumble, leaving his post and fleeing arcades. Wait, so if Balthir is the son of Dr. Sid, wasn't there a name to refer to these characters in Final Fantasy? Well, if we check Balthir's real name, we see it's Fanfran Mid Bonanza. While complicated, he still has the name Mid in it, making the tradition growing. Final Fantasy XIII makes things ambiguous with the introduction of Sid Reigns, that contrary to others is more known as Reigns alone instead. While not creator or inventor of airships, as that's not a common method of transportation, he is the commander of the largest airship, the Lindblom. If that name sounds familiar, you can check this lovely video. 
He also has a big role as commander of the military unit known as the Cavalry. What makes this character interesting during the story is that while he helps you for a while, later he reveals the party member that our focus is to actually destroy Cocoon, showing to be also a Lucy with the focus of leading us to such destruction, but with the determination to challenge that focus that was given to him. So with the last bit of humanity he has, as he turns into a Sith, he fights us to set us free and avoid that destruction instead. At the end of the fight, Sid offers words of encouragement and advises the party to choose their own fate, as he did before turning into a crystal and disappearing. Making him an icon of the concept of fighting against our own fate and writing it with our own will instead. But to add salt to the wound, Barthandelus salvaged Sid Crystal to revive him to use him as the puppet leader of Cocoon. As the city of Eden descends into chaos, Sid's former allies arrive to capture him and he requests them to kill him so he can finally be free from the strings of fate. This is Sid's reign's final moment. He also has a brief cameo in Lightning Returns. Well, technically it's not him, but the souls inside the chaos, the souls of the dead, took his image to communicate to Lightning, the savior, to make her understand that God's plan was to seize the existence of such souls in the next world he was going to create, with the saved souls of the living. So yeah, he does remain dead. As mentioned before, there's no better place to add references than an MMO, and there's no better example of that than Final Fantasy XIV. What we care about here is the leader of Garland Ironworks, Sid Garland. These are a group of, you know it, engineers working together to arm Eorzea's city-states with the most powerful technology, the Magitek. The good thing is that he's not just the selected NPC to bring airships to the plot during this game, but you'll be able to interact and find about his own personal story, his past about being a passionate mechanic like his father, how the latter became distant because his own personal project Meteor, and started being raised by Gaius from the Empire, until Sid left after a confrontation with his father and the event known as Poshta Incident, where his father project was the reason of countless casualties in the Citadel. By the way, his father's name is Midas, or Mid for short. In a way, it reminds me of Balthier, but with the names reversed. In fact, during the Vosja incident instance, you'll be able to complete a dungeon recalling Sid memories of those events, and figuring out the real truth of such, as the scenes unfolding in his sketch are not completely true at first. Exploring one's self-consciousness while figuring out unreliable memories and solving them is surprisingly one of my favorite Final Fantasy moments. Of course, given the nature of this game and its size and updates, Sid will offer you a lot more and different stuff through the game, as he's a great support character for our crew. Final Fantasy XV introduces you fairly quick to Sid Sofiar, an old family friend and owner of the Hammerhead service station, or at least the mechanic side of it, in charge of taking care of Noctis and friends' main source of transportation, the royal car Regalia, alongside his own granddaughter Cindy. But mostly her though, she's younger and more active for current works. Being mechanics doesn't stop them from being linked to airships though, as the Regalia has the potential to become a flying unit, if fulfilled the required parts for it, 
So there it is. Sid's role in the world story are mainly from the previous years, where he fought alongside Nogdi's father, King Regis during his youth, and their other friends, Cor Leonis and Westcom Armagh. In the current days, he acts as support to the prince during his own journey and upgrading the player weapons in terms of gameplay support. Ok, let me rant a little bit about something. Sid's granddaughter is Sydney Arum. Cute, isn't she? Well, her real name in Japanese is Sydney, so even she has the Sid name, making her the only female on the list, which is cooler. But no, the English name decided to rip that for reasons I don't get. On the brighter side, there's one more family member here, and that is not Sydney's father, who passed away and is called very properly Mid Sophia. She has her mother's last name, by the way. In these bonus tracks, I wanted to mention some seeds of a couple of spin-off games, that we can consider them mainline and it'll be completely fine. The first one matters because of his full name and is from Tactics. Sidolfus Orlando, not the only one with that name. He becomes a playable character in the game, he is an important commander, a holy swordsman and one of the most powerful units, known as Thunder God Seed or TG Seed for short. And also he's the only one that is not involved in mechanical stuff or airships or inventions, so that's a first. He will have his cameo in its particular way during the return to Ivalis raid in Final Fantasy XIV, which is very cool. And the other one is Sid Alstein from Final Fantasy Type-0, which is the main antagonist of the game, not just an enemy. He is the Imperial Martial leader of the Milites Empire, always linked to technology improvements and developments that start the war and invasion to other regions. But not only for that, he also acts as the final boss as the World of Orients will trigger the start of Tempus Finis, the end of time, if one of the four nations take control of the world under the same banner, even if it was Usaku's victory towards the offensive of Piako. Sid makes his way to the Temple Pandemonium, and in an attempt to stop the chains of events that will restart after Orients is destroyed, he commits suicide, just to become the body of the deity-like being, the Rursan Arbiter that the cadets of Class Zero fights at the end. Sid's attempt to free the world from this spiral work at the end nevertheless, as the cadets convinced Aresia to break such. In conclusion, seed characters often have a group of distinct traits we can expect. They are often mechanically minded and frequently portrayed as engineers or inventors, often the source of the airship the player uses towards the end of the game as its captain or creator. Another thing to point out is that seed is usually older than the main cast, sometimes by several decades, and they are thus portrayed as fatherly figures, sometimes as the biological adoptive or surrogate father of one of the main characters. So what can we expect from Final Fantasy XVI? Well, what we know first is that his name is Sidolfus Telamon, again, a name that has been used for Final Fantasy XII and Tactics. Not only that, but he could easily be called Thunder God Sid, as he is the dominant of the icon Ramu, having the power of lightning in his gameplay, as he is shown to be one of the main allies of Clive, shown in bits of gameplay helping you on the battles, making him to be a reliable party member which is always exciting. The other thing that we can check is that he is in fact related to inventions, as his online description mentions he is a man of science, who also conducts research into how one might live in the Deadlands, as he strives to be the place where the exploited dominance can die on their own terms.
And personally, I'm sure one aspect to look forward to is how he seemed to cross paths with a certain Benedicta, because that drama looks spicy. So with this little information already, he's already stepping up to be a great seed representation. With all this exciting news about the first new Final Fantasy mainline games in years, it's the perfect time to get into this lovely franchise, as it provides a wide range of ideas and gameplay changes to keep it fresh and make every experience unique, making it that there's probably a specific favorite game that resonates more or less with each person. Thank you very much for watching, enjoy some Final Fantasy and I'll see you later. Love you!